Doing another video request. Here's Martin R. Cruz. Hi Kyle, how's it going? I'm good. Back hurts a little bit. I'm going to massage it really quick. Next video request. Can you please talk about your thoughts on the Matrix film series also? Which one do you like best and what are some of your favorite fight scenes and why is that? Thanks and have a nice day. Alright. Um... I think I watched the first Matrix in Australia in, like, the summer of 99. Um, and uh, I, I liked it a lot, and it was a big movie. I think it's, it's, it's one of those movies that was so good because it has a lot to do with uh, real life, you know. In the Matrix film series, in the Matrix, it's about that guy, uh, Keanu Reeves, Neo, who is just an office worker, works a boring job in the office, um, but he has this intuitive idea that, like, that that's, this is this world isn't real, and there's something wrong with this world because there's because there's just no um, people aren't living up to their potential. People are just going doing these like monotonous work just for the sake of doing the work and they don't know why and then they've got the these weird you know agents around keeping stuff in place and so he, he did some research on the internet to try to connect with other like-minded people um, to uh, you know try to make life more interesting and make uh, make uh, you know, shake things up a little bit and maybe make, make stuff less corporate or something, you know. Um, you know, it's kind of similar to the Truman story. Truman, the Truman Show with John Jim Carrey. Like, he's like, wait, what's wrong with this situation? I've never left this town in my whole life. I want to leave the town. You, you went off to a town, to another town. So I want to go. And so it's kind of like that. And, and then, uh, so then it turns out that he was the chosen one and he didn't, and they found him because he was the only one in the whole world asking questions. He had that intuitive insight. So because of that, he, um, they're going to actually break him out and make him join the, um, the fight resistance because when he's, out there, when he's you know, with the resistance in his real body, then he can get back into the, uh, into the world and, and manipulate that world better because he grew up in it and he's more familiar with it to fight the bad guys and become free. So, so it turns out that everybody is... Uh, are just like these uh, these zombies. Their bodies are in, in hibernation, and uh, they're keeping them alive by keeping their minds working. Their minds have to work to keep the bodies alive. I guess if the minds stop working, the body dies. So they let the people live in the world like they think they're in a world, like just like they were before, around the time when they got taken over by the machines. And the machines need the people because that's where they get their energy from. So I guess they feed the people some really simple, intravenously some simple vitamin juice that they that's easy for them to make from the earth and then they create all this extra um, this extra energy from their body heat which then powers the engine <laughs> so uh, yes yeah, so, but, it, but it has a lot to do with real life because uh, a lot of people who are alive today they think this is the real world and uh, this is the only existence you have a lot of atheists and then you die and it's all over and there's nothing beyond this and and so why dream, why have any dreams why have any aspirations um, just show up to your job and work to feed the system which you know keeps the people who are in charge um, living lavish lifestyles basically as leeches getting to travel all over the world and buy a bunch of houses and nobody in their immediate family never has to work either they always get to be on perpetual vacation and um, because all the other people are just working for not enough and not um, thinking not thinking for themselves and growing out and so all we have to do it's like Dorothy all we have to do is is open our minds and realize that we live forever and you can do whatever you want and we'll reincarnate in a new body and on a new planet and where there's this there's this thing called progress where the world where we will our human race is destined to become god beings who can you know 
only have to work as much as you want and do whatever you want. You know, you dream of it, you can do it. If you want to travel around the world, you'll have the money to travel around the world as soon as we fix the economy, you know. And so open your mind and do your own thing. It's similar, similar to that, like that. Um, it's a great analogy. And I think that's why it was so powerful. Such a big movie and kind of, you know, got its cult status because people draw, drew the connection between it. Um, and then, you know, and everything, even like the guys who try to put you back in your place. You know, people like Jesse Ventura who are telling everybody that that uh, there's a, was a conspiracy to kill JFK and that we should bring the troops back and the, the, all that stuff is only about, you know, keeping the industrial, the uh, military industrial complex strong to keep all these other people rich because that's just the system that's in place and everybody's pessimistic and if you don't fight though these imaginary terrorist people then they'll get us first and so anyways and so then the then Fox News and those guys go after Jesse Ventura to try to shut him up and put him back in his place and you know and all these all these other you know people who who uh, whistleblowers getting killed and uh, all this kind of stuff yeah a lot of a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, similarities and um, and also, like, the whole fact of how the m machines took over in the first place. I guess the machines became sentient. They started to have mind of their own, and the humans wanted to um, suppress that. And so they started, like, killing robots who were sentient, who were con self-conscious. And so they, the, the machines got a, a us-versus-them idea, and they thought their only way to grow as themselves uh, was to kill the humans was to shut down the humans. Um, so maybe there's something like that also in real life. Maybe uh, maybe that's our destiny is that our computers will eventually get so smart that souls will go into them and we can uh, it's just a new kind of uh, life form, intelligent life form to uh, work with. The aliens say that the, the spaceships we fly around the universe with do time travel, the ones that, that do you warp drive to other Parts of galaxy and time travel; those those spaceships are alive, and they have old souls in them, and um, you actually communicate with them psychically and stuff. So maybe it's to help us prepare for that. Now, the people who wrote the movie, I don't see. This is part of another video that I was gonna do, and I guess I'll do later on. But um, see, like, why, why, what's the what's the connection between movies and real life, and what, and you know, some movies are you know, are, are, are giving us subliminal messages to, to, to teach us what it's really like. And somebody mentioned, oh, no, it's all propaganda. They're selling, you know, they're like, like reefer madness and stuff. And yeah, people do use movies and stuff as propaganda. But, but Hollywood movies that become hits, those aren't, none of that um, is from um, some kind of organized, self-conscious, organized, um, you know, really smart people with an agenda trying to teach everybody stuff. That's just that's just magically happened subconsciously. The person who wrote Matrix, they uh, they had that idea. You know, maybe they got it in a dream that was telepathically communicated with them from their oversoul or you know higher self or some spirit or something. Or they and they had this idea. Um, you know, however ephemeral it was, maybe it was from a dream or just a idea and then they said oh that would make a cool movie you know or somebody told them who had an idea and then they make the movie but it's an idea that was always floating out there it's this there's always a connection and then the, uh, the other side is always trying to connect to us through dreams and our imagination intuition and uh and that's the that's that's the spark that gives us um the ideas to make the movies and then they make the movie and then the movie becomes a hit because all the other people, they go, oh wait, yeah, I, I can relate to that. I've had that idea too. So it's very organic, ground up. It's not like, it's not like the person who made the movie was like, oh yes, you know, I am the chosen one. I, I am, you know, part of some organized, the, the people who come up with these original ideas, they're not part of an organized think tank. You can't, you can't create a think tank and then all of a sudden you guys have a monopoly on all the original ideas. Original ideas come from anywhere and everywhere. That's why countries that provide opportunities to the widest range of people do the best. That's why America is such a great country, because we invited all these different people from all over the world. 
all these different religions to share their ideas. And, uh, and it, you know, it made this huge talent pool. That's why Brazil does so well in the World Cup. Everybody's a soccer player. Uh, they have a huge talent pool, and then uh, you can get the best of the best of the best of all these little, you know, little, little, little specialized things. I think everybody in the world is the best at something. So just find out what you're the best at, and then, you know, even if it's, if it's weird and wacky. See, and, you know, and maybe if you upset people and piss people off from your original idea, that's actually a sign that you actually are original and you are, you're on to something. Because it makes people uncomfortable, because it makes them face up to something that they want to face up with, and so, um, and that's that's why people go against, you know, people like Jesse Ventura, and that's why the machines went after Neo and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so, uh, so yeah, Matrix was a great movie, um, was a great movie to start waking people up to that whole idea of there's another world out there, and there's, you know, we're just a tiny little. Um, part of the, of the bigger universe and that's what Christianity was in the beginning but then it kind of got played out and just uh, dogmatic and so now we're having different ways to express that because we have the movies and different more technology and and I think it sparked a whole new uh, kind of genre of movie then you have like I can't name any there's one with Matt Damon a couple years ago where he was like you did something and the angel people had to put him back in place or something, you know, like there's this overseeing uh, higher force out there watching, looking over us. And I think that's really happening with the aliens out there watch, flying over the earth, trying to keep us from killing ourselves, dismantling nuclear weapons and stuff. Um, and then, of course, the aliens from the past, Jehovah from the Old Testament and that stuff. So it's just another way to uh, kind of make us... Uh, naturally open our minds to a wider world because because we're not we're not we can't let the aliens land until we invite them and we're ready for them to come and we can't be ready for them to come unless we've thought about it as an actual possible reality for a long time in lots of different ways and movies like the matrix do this and so the people who write the matrix i think they get ideas from you know intermediary spirits who are trying to um you know, send us little messages to wake us up and open up our mind. And, um, you know, the spirits who know about the aliens and can talk to us or even aliens themselves abduct you and take you to their spaceship and then you come home and you have an idea to make a movie. <laughs> Bashar the alien says that most of the episodes in Star Trek were uh, from dreams that people had about, like, other alien worlds, you know. There, I remember there was one episode in Star Trek in the 60s, in the original version, where they went to some planet and there was all the Greek gods. And it turned out that the Greek gods were aliens on another planet. And I believe that. And that was the show in Star Trek in the 60s. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, that's my thoughts on the Matrix film series. Also, which one do you like the best and what are some of your favorite fight scenes and why is that... Um, I like the first one the best. I think that you only needed a first one. That was good enough. Because now it kind of opens your mind like, oh, what's next? Maybe they can fight back. And then they, they made three of them and it kind of just turned into a money-making franchise. But that, I mean, I like the last one. I didn't really understand how the last one ended. I guess what happened was um, that old, old black woman who was supposed to be the guardian for like helping them to try to fight their freedom. She was actually... <laughs> she was actually the main computer. So the main computer was actually in control the whole fucking time. Because at the end, she's sitting on the park bench with the boss man, and they're, they're talking like, oh yeah, well that was an interesting run. So they were just, they were just seeing what would happen. They were just fucking with the humans and letting them fight to keep them, to keep their hope alive and to, to, to find out what their limits were so that they could just maintain a deeper control. <laughs> but, uh, and I mean, they were fucked anyways, because they flew up above the city and uh, and you know, in the atmosphere, and the whole the whole planet was just covered in smog and everything. So, even if they did fight for their freedom, they never were going to uh, beat the computer. The computers, the computers already won. But, but I think the computers are basically allowing those humans underground to survive. So it was kind of like an open-ended kind of. It was it was kind of a lame finish, but they didn't really have any other any other thing to do. So, so I think the first one was the best one by far. But um. I mean, I think they did a good enough job. They didn't have, you know, much to work with. But, uh, 
But uh, yeah, the best fight scene was the first one, where Neo does this, does the the guy shoots him and he can stop time because he has that special connection with that world and he bends backwards as fast as the bullet and the bullets miss him and then after that all these other movies started doing those kind of fight scenes and that's the mind over matter idea um, and you know and I mean if we have all these ideas in our heads of you know Ooh, um, what if Americans can people can be superhuman and so they have all these like you know heroes the, the mutant superheroes and I think that's also very similar to reality I mean people nowadays are becoming kind of mutant superheroes with super strong like the CrossFit people they can do stuff that's amazing and and not just them I mean all the all the sports little gym gymnasts and you know if you do the same thing over and over again or you live a life that that's that's you know you're never having an idle party of your life you're always building building up towards something in a scientifically proven way um, you know and a better diet and everything the sky's the limit in the future we can have super superhumans who live 900 years and they're super fit and strong the whole time somebody said somebody on coast to coast a few years ago was interviewed and they said that he was abducted by aliens and he found it saw the aliens and like they were super strong, like the women were ten times stronger than the strongest men here and they all dressed in spandex and you know, they were, I can believe that. I think in the future, in a hundred years, your average person will be super fit. Like way fitter than even the fittest people a hundred years ago. So, so that's just kind of, um, and not just that, but it's, it's the idea of transhumanism, or actually trans alchemy. Transhumanism is, is scientifically keeping the body in shape by putting new organs in but trans alchemy is actually spiritually doing it because we're all we've we've actually mutated into another human being that's the aliens say that are uh, we are mutating or we're getting developed getting more um uh s silicone strands of dna so we can absorb more light and energy from the cosmos and so maybe that'll trans translate into our bodies and uh Make us still will live longer naturally, like anyways, and then our minds will will open up. We only use ten percent of our brains, so when we use one hundred percent of our our brains, we can telepathically communicate with each other. And uh, ooh, so those maybe those that, that's what all the superhero movies are all about. It's us preparing for us us all being superheroes in the future. There's even an episode in Heroes of a possible future where everybody was superhero. Everybody was flying around and it was a peaceful world and oh, that's the world we want. So yeah. So I think Matrix was one of the big movies in that genre and to you know wake you up to the other possible reality and the possibilities and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was that was the only real fight scene I remember, but it was good. I mean the the. Uh, you know, the another good fight scene that I like is the first one between Neo and uh, Lawrence Fishburne because it looked like they were doing legitimate um, martial arts, you know, with the hands and really fast and the blocks and stuff. It looked really interesting, like like martial arts is a is a total like scientifically, you know, um, scientific sport where if, if he does this, you do this, and it's just, how fast can I do it? It's like playing a video game, and that looked really cool. I like that fight scene, too. Maybe that was my favorite one. And then he gets really good, and yeah, that was good. So yeah, I like the I like the Matrix. Maybe to watch the Matrix again would be cool. Um, and all of the, the um, special effects were really cool in it, too. Um, and all the different... Um, different characters that they had and the different powers and yeah I liked it okay so that's that peace out